Units and measurement. Everything starts with fundamental base units. I only listed metric here because you'll see English units like the foot or the pound mass get their definitions by referencing these units. So for example, today, the formal definition for the foot is that one foot is equal to exactly 0 0.3048 meters. The meter references nature. All of the fundamental units shown here reference nature. So remember, fundamental units are units of measurement based on a physical property of nature that humans have defined and given a name to. Mass is something we observe in nature. Length is something we observe in nature. Time, etc. I think there are more fundamental units than the ones shown in the table there. Sound intensity, maybe, which is measured in decibels. I guess an angle, you could say, is a fundamental unit. I'm sure there's more, but it won't be much more, right? Because there's only so many properties in nature that you can describe. All measuring instruments, thermometers, scales, mechanical watches, digital watches, tape measures, calipers, voltmeters, etc. The manufacturers of these instruments use master references to calibrate those instruments. So a ruler manufacturer wouldn't go buy a ruler from Lowe's to set the cutting and marking lengths on their machines, right? They would use a master reference that they got from some government organization, and that government organization would make its master references using another master reference that it got from some world organization, right? So for any measuring device, you will be able to trace the references used to produce that device to one worldwide accepted master reference. So for example, a guy making a tape measure in Seattle versus a guy making a tape measure in Asia, if both tape measures are made in English units of feet and inches, then if you follow the references for each instrument through the different agencies like we just described, you will converge at a point that point being the worldwide accepted master reference for length. You can imagine, though, that you wouldn't want to have too many links in the chain between the master reference and the instrument makers. The reason is because every time you make a copy, there is a little bit of variance. And, you know, you make another copy, there's a little more variance. If there's too much variance, then instruments around the world won't exactly match. And this creates a problem because think about manufactured components like, like bolts and nuts. <clears throat> or, or even think about the results and reports of different scientific experiments that have taken place in the past, present, future, or even at the same time at different locations across the, across the world. <clears throat> there needs to be consistency here or mismatches will cause failures and breakdowns. If the instruments a bolt manufacturer uses vary too far from the instruments a machine shop is using to cut, cut its bolt holes, then when it's time to assemble the product, components won't fit, right? So it really all goes back to having that perfect, ever-reliable, never-changing master reference that we can all go back to and say, base everything you do off of that. Exactly that. It's tempting to try and say, okay, why don't we just pick something, define it, write it down, and that will be the exact reference no matter what, forever. Just write it down. Well, okay, what are you writing down exactly? So write down what you think the official second should be. Remember, though, the second, just like all of the fundamental units, is a natural phenomenon. So I guess what you what you could write down is the duration it takes for the sun to return to its initial position in the sky, divide that duration into 86,400 equal pieces, and that will be our official second. Well, okay, there's a problem here. This sun-earth duration isn't going to be consistent day after day, year after year. That's why we have leap seconds, leap years, etc. Humans don't notice this, but 
computers trying to communicate with each other, satellites, etc., those, those do notice it. So now you might be tempted to say, let's just pick one year, say the year 2000, whatever supercomputers have saved as the duration for, for that year, that will be our official year from here on out. So don't worry about recording the duration again the next year or the next year. Just save that duration. But what you need to realize here, though, is you say we will have some supercomputer save this duration, and you're probably thinking, you know, yeah, this is perfect. Computers can perform billions of operations per second, ridiculous processing speeds and memories. Just make sure that this second file never gets deleted and we're all set. But, okay, well, okay, what is the computer actually saving? It's not saving a big number, but a time duration. A time duration has nothing to do with math, processing speed, or memory. I don't know how computers are actually built, but I guess when you ask a computer to output a second for you, it just uses its own internal microprocessor electrical impulses to recreate that second. Take out your iPhone and start the timer. How does the microprocessor know when to display the next second or the next second or the next tenth of a second? It's not doing math or some kind of deep processing to figure this out. It's just recreating a time duration somehow. I guess by using electrical impulse instructions that somebody programmed into it, right? So now you might be tempted to ask, Okay, it, it looks like my phone is doing a pretty good job of keeping time. What's the big deal? Why do we need to have a more precise time reference than what computers can currently recreate for us? For most of the tasks in our lives, you're right. It doesn't matter. But for computers communicating around the world, in the financial markets, satellites, GPS, pinpointing exact locations, etc., a more precise time reference can be a big deal here in terms of performance and efficiency. You could also look at today's scientific research. We are currently studying and performing experiments on particles that reside inside of protons and neutrons. So these, so these things are mind-blowingly tiny, and you can't just make instruments for these scientists to use that are more precise than the most precise, consistent natural reference that we currently have. You could physically make one of these instruments and just put on it an ultra-precise scale, but this would be a waste of time because you could never be sure that all of the different readings around the world were consistent because there would be – you'd have nothing to reference, reference those measurements to. So as of today, what are our references for each of the fundamental units? I will talk about this in the next video.